Hey, what's up everybody? It's Rox and I'm coming to you today with the um, Rox Ecology number 8. Um, I got so many letters. Uh, <clears throat> you guys, my allergies. Oh my god, they're so bad today. I am so sorry. Mm. <clears throat> That's ghetto, huh? <laughs> um, the... Um, I got so many letters, like maybe 30 letters. Obviously, I can't do all of those letters in this one Rocks Ecology. So I am going to tell you guys, two, I'm going to answer as many questions as I can today. And then whatever I don't answer today, I'm going to answer in my next Rocks Ecology. So you guys don't send me no more letters, okay? <laughs> Let me get through the rest of the letters um, first. And then, um, you know, let me get caught up. So just for this one week, don't send no more Rock Ecology letters unless you just feel like you have to send it. But I got a whole bunch of letters. I'm obviously not going to be able to do them all in this one video. I don't want this video to be an hour long and all of that. It's already probably feeling like with the letters that I have, it's going to be close to like 40 minutes. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Y'all work with me here. I know I asked for it. See what happened when you ask for shit, then you get it, huh? So anyway, with all that said, let's get to it, shall we? The other day I was talking to my best friend and she brought up this crazy idea on getting pregnant on purpose without the guy's knowledge or say so. She asked me what way or how should she accomplish her goal. I wanted to look at her crazy and just shake some sense into her. Throughout the years I have tried to give her advice on leaving the dude alone, but she always goes back and messes with him no matter what dirty is done to her. I asked her why did she want to do this and she said she only... Um, she only wanted to because he has good genes and then I asked... What would you tell your family parents? She said they wouldn't care because I would be pregnant. Her, fam her family, mainly her mom, has been hounding her for years to become pregnant, which I don't understand because she's only 25 and in school. Rox, I don't want to come off as judgmental because she has said in the past I always judge her bad decisions. What can I do or say to my dear friend to let her know she deserves better than this and there is somebody out there for her that she can start a family with? Thanks in advance. Girl, your friend is tripping. Um, I can say that I've heard of people doing stuff like that, but I don't know. I, I, I really think that that's a horrible idea. And I, ain't nothing else you can do but just tell her. That's not a good idea. She's grown, and obviously she's going to make the decision on her own. But if she wants to do that, and her family is all, you know, she already knows that her family is going to stand behind her and, uh, you know, support the decision then I don't really see what else you can do about it. <laughs> she sounds like she pretty much has made up her mind and the best and the only thing that she's having a problem with is trying to figure out how she can do it, okay? So she ain't really asking you if she should do it. She's asking you, now what do I do? Do I put a hole in the condom or do I, you know, get them drunk and, you know, we don't have a condom or do I, you know, tell them I'm on birth control and when I'm really not? I mean, it's really not nothing else you can do. I mean, I would definitely tell her if you consider her your friend and if she's a good friend, you tell her. I, I just don't really think that that's a good idea. And it's not a good idea, but I know women do it. There are, unfortunately, quite a few women that do it in good genes. That shit is crazy. <laughs> I mean, he got good genes, like what, everybody in his family is good looking and everything? <sighs> I don't know what's going on with the women today, but yeah, it's too bad, but girl, it ain't really too much more you can do about it other than, you know, express your feelings. She goes forward with, you know, if she goes forward with her idea, with her plan, then it's going to be up to you whether or not you're going to be there for her still. And I don't really know what else you could tell her. I mean, I'm sure... <laughs> Well, I mean, you could obviously say the obvious. I mean, why would you want to have a baby with somebody that, you know, obviously doesn't want to have one with you or you guys would have already planned one together? Um, you, do you know if you sneak, it's not really right to sneak a baby up on a man like this and then you're going to be wanting child support if you guys are not going to be together and it's just going to be a lot of turmoil surrounding this whole birth and this baby and that's just not what you want, okay? I mean, those are all the things I'm sure that you would tell her anyway. It's going to be up to her to listen to it and ultimately her decision whether or not she has this baby or not. So that's really pretty much all you can do. I'm sorry. That's crazy. Boy, we got some crazy friends out here, don't we? My mother is 48 years old and a jobless codependent woman. I am 25 and she has lived with me for five years. How do I get her out of my house? She consumes everything and never had a full-time job over a year. Her last full-time job was in the mid-90s. I don't want a relationship with her and I want her out of my life. Help. Oh my God, you guys, my throat. Oh, 
sorry. <laughs> Girl, I ain't see. These kind of questions are always difficult for me because I didn't have a mother like that. I don't have no experience with shiftless parents. You know, people that don't want to contribute and things like that. So I just honestly don't know what to tell you. I mean, you guys know how I feel about my parents. I um, I couldn't even imagine wanting to, you know, not wanting a relationship with my mother, anything like that. So I don't really know what to tell you other than, I mean, if you don't want it, put her out. <laughs> I mean, what, what's holding you back from doing that, okay? If, if you're feeling like you don't want to be with her, you don't want to be there, then put her out if that's what it is. I mean, you obviously feel like you can't do that, okay? You must obviously have enough respect for her whether you wouldn't want to put the lady out on the street. But, I mean, there's nobody else that could help her in the family. Does she have a sister or somebody that maybe might be willing to take her on? I mean, you know, I don't... I don't know what to tell you. Have you talked to her about the fact that she hasn't kept a full-time job and that she's mooching off of you? Okay, maybe she thinks that everything is straight. Okay, maybe you need to sit her down and be like, Mom, if you're going to be in the house with me, I'm going to need you to contribute to the household. Okay, I, I'm, I'm taking care of you and it's a strain on me. Okay, maybe we can think about getting a job and you going to it every single day. <laughs> okay, but... What's holding you back from putting her out if that's what you want to do? I mean, I think that that's, I, I mean, that's harsh to me, but, you know, I like I said, I don't really have experience with this kind of thing. Maybe somebody else out there does have experience. You guys can maybe help her, but, um, yeah, I don't, if you can't get the lady to get out and get a job and, you know, help you out in the household, then just put her out, okay? And that's mean. That's horrible. I wouldn't do nothing like that. <laughs> it's always funny when people ask questions like this because there's really nothing else to it other than you either deal with the fact that your mom is there not doing anything or put them out. Um, and of course, the other alternative is talk the lady into getting her jo getting a job and contribute it. I don't know. And whoever else can help her, you guys, just leave it leave it in the um, comment section below, okay? I don't get along with my co-workers. I have been in my job for a year now and don't communicate with any of my co-workers. Well, there's one that we were really cool and she's much older than me. But anyway, I cut off communication with my co-workers after I saw that they were reporting back to the supervisor about me. I just can't smile or talk to people that I think are trying to hurt me. They aren't, there aren't many black people on my shift, but the few that are there, they stick to really close to the white people that happens to not like me. I have one co-worker, a black guy, that completely stopped talking to me. I thought it was rather odd, and it seems like he wants me to ask him why he's not speaking. It's like all of a sudden he needs an invitation to speak. He's 40 and I'm 25. I have a very low tolerance for immaturity when it comes to people that are much older than me. I'm not going to ask him why, and I really don't care. But I have noticed and just figured he's joined the crowd. <clears throat> I have no desire to I have no desire whatsoever to be a part of the clique, but they are always trying to get me in trouble and even though I don't speak or even look at these people, how would you handle a group like this? I'm not saying that you are the problem, but I'm just going to ask you, why is it that everybody don't like you at your job? What is, I feel like we missing parts of the story. What exactly has happened that's turned every single body in the, in the building against you? Like nobody likes you other, except for one person, you know, and if she's an older woman, she looked like she might be the type to just get out of the business. Don't worry about what everybody else is saying and doing anyway. Maybe we need to kind of look towards ourselves a little bit and uh, figure out if we've done anything to make everybody not like us. A lot of times, the way that we come off towards people is the way that they react towards us, okay? You might not have done anything to anybody, but it might be the fact that maybe you might have a slight attitude. Maybe some days you might look like you ain't in the mood for no bullshit, okay? And uh, maybe you, you know, I don't want to say that it's you, but usually when everybody has an issue with you, it's not them, it's you. That's the first part that just kind of steps, jumps out at me. Now, let's say for, let's say, that you haven't done anything, okay, and that you literally have stepped into a workplace where there's a big click and it's hard to get into the group. I mean, I guess that does happen as well. If you can't sit down and talk to these people and figure out, talk to somebody and figure out exactly what is the issue, why they don't like you, why they not want to talk to you and things like that, then the only thing else that you can do is look for another job. Who wants to be at a job eight hours a day? 
or maybe sometimes even longer and just be in a environment where everybody is mean and rude to you okay your job is almost you almost spend more time at your workplace than you do with your family okay and i always think it's very important to be comfortable in your job position your job situation and you know you you need to be able to be there for eight hours and not be you know just bombarded with bullshit all day every day okay so th those are the two options okay try to work it out with somebody find out from somebody from the group why they don't like you what have you done to them to make them feel like you just this you know this bitch or whatever and uh but if you don't want to do that then you need to find another job, okay? You say that you don't really care, but you obviously care because you're writing a letter to you. It's, it's getting to you, okay? It's hard to be in a job where you hate everybody and everybody hates you. So those are the options. Those I are the options. a 21-year-old African-American woman. I have been dating my current boyfriend off and on since I was 16 years old. Being the type of woman I am, we did have our breakups to give each other time to live our lives, date other people, etc. We have been back together for the past year and a half. We've talked about marriage and children and even getting a house together. We love each other very much and I'm certain that he is the one. Well, now he has a job opportunity in Dallas, Texas. It's like five hours away from where we live now. When he first told me he was moving, I was upset because I felt like he was going to tell me that we had to break up. Well, he actually wants me to go with him. The current living situation that I'm in now is not a good one, which is why we were looking into buying a house to begin with. I was born and raised in Arkansas and my entire family is here. Now, to keep it real, I'm only close to my grandparents and my brothers. I really don't have friends because since high school I've been focused on working and going to school. I believe this move would be a great opportunity for me since I've always had plans to move to another state anyway. My boyfriend has found us a place to live and he started his new job. He wants me to move up there with him in May. My question to you, Rocky, is should I go? I mean, I always thought that it would be better if we were engaged. He says he wants to marry me. He just hasn't popped the question. I always wanted to do things the right way. And in my opinion, getting engaged would make me feel more inclined to move up there. A long distance relationship would not work with us because he went away to school. We tried it about three years ago when he went away to school. It didn't work at all. I believe him when he says that he loves me and that he wants me to be his wife and the mother of his children. Should a ring be a requirement? Should I stay or should I just go? I'm a little torn and I need your help. Now, I know a lot of people won't agree with me. I am really not quite as traditional as a lot of people, a lot of other people are. I say that if this is the man that you feel like you are going to be with and, um, you know, he has expressed that he wants you to move there with him and you guys want to build a future together, then I would go. Especially with the fact that um, your current living situation is really not the best. You know, if you can, if you feel like you have opportunity at, in Dallas as well, then I, I would go. I don't see what's holding you back. Yeah, it is kind of, yeah, we want to be engaged, but engagement is not marriage. And just because you're engaged don't mean that you might get married. I mean, there's a lot of people who break engagements. Long distance relationships, I'm not going to say that they don't work, but it's a, it's very, 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 very difficult, okay? Because just the natural course of life, you want somebody to be there with you, um, you know, through good times and bad times. So it may work for a certain length of time, but then it gets to a point where it's like, okay, we need to either be together or break up so we can all be with somebody that we can be happy with, you know, most of the time. So I would do it. I don't really see any problem with taking the chance, and, you know, leaving out on faith and just moving on down there. Good luck to you. Hey, Rox. I have been with my husband since 2010. We were in a long distance relationship. We are young and lived with our parents. Recently, a crisis Recently, a crisis in my family happened. I am forced to live with him and his family. The issue is that they, his family, are extremely dirty people. The house looks like something from a scary movie. It is also infested with pests. I am terrified. I don't even use the bathroom here. I walk to the store. I can't move until the fall. What do I do? First of all, why were you guys married but not living together to begin with? Like, what made you guys get married but still decide to live in two separate households? I mean, if you guys are young, then why did you get married? That's another question that I guess really don't have much to do with this situation. But, um, yeah, that's that's the first thing that stands out. But let's just jump past that. So you didn't had to move out there with him and his family. But the house is gross. The only thing you can do is get you a bucket of water, some ammonia, you know, a little face mask, some bleach, you know, some comet, and get to work. I mean, you're going to have to clean up around there. If the people don't clean up around there, and if it's, a, you know, if it's to the point where you can't even sit comfortably in that house, then either you clean it up, 
and try to get it together as much as you can or you're going to have to move, okay? Now, I know that your financial situation is not um, where you can just jump up and move right now. Um, you might have to just grin and bear it. I mean, that sounds horrible. That sounds like a terrible living situation, um, but maybe you, you know... Maybe you might have jumped into this marriage thing a little bit uh, prematurely because when you get married, you guys should be able to live in the house. He should be able to take care of you or at least you guys should be able to contribute to the household together and have enough money to live in a place on your own, okay? A marriage is not going to work if the husband is living with his mom and daddy and the, and the wife is living with her mom and daddy, okay? But, I mean, that's all done now and really it's past now, So, but, but I'm just saying, it started off a little wrong, a little differently than, you know, our traditional way when we think about getting married and moving on with our spouse. The only thing that you can do is either clean up around there as much as you can, start getting some traps, <laughs> set them out for the, for the mice or the rats or whatever is around, um, but try, try to help get that house together. That's, that's the only way that you can do it. The people were nice enough to let you move in there uh, with them. They might just be used to being nasty and dirty. It's people like that. Just just gross all the time. So then, you know, they don't even see no, no problem with it. So maybe you might just have to try to help them make the change, okay? All right. <laughs> Good luck to you. Hi, Rox. I'm a 25-year-old African-American female. I'm a young professional who lives at home with my mom. When I finished school, I moved back home. Lately, my mother has been treating me like a teenager, uh, such as 11 p.m. curfews in real life. I have three older siblings, and my 30-year-old brother, who also lives at home, is free to do as he pleases. The double standard between my sisters and me versus my brother is nothing new. However, the imbalance is beginning to become unbearable since it is negatively affecting my home environment. I contribute a great deal to the household budget and I know that if I were to move out it would put the entire burden on my mother. Does the you live under my roof so you do what I say mentality apply even when my financial contribution to the roof and other living expenses equals my mother's? Do you think that should matter? My mother and I have always had a really healthy mother-daughter relationship. I have never viewed her as a friend but always as a parent and I have the utmost respect for her. I feel there are dynamics to our relationship that should evolve as time goes. People are considered handicapped or disabled when they don't develop at a normal pace and I feel that's happening to me in my mother's relationship. It stopped developing a decade ago. I would love to hear your thoughts on this situation since you have a daughter and a son. Any feedback you can give on how to address this issue with my mother would be greatly appreciated. First of all, let's look at this from your mother's viewpoint, okay? I'm going to start acting as if I'm your mother right now. This is my house. If this is the family house, this is the house that you grew up in, I'm assuming, then um, you went away to college and then you moved back into my house. This is still my house. Yes, of course you contribute to the household financially because you work and now you're living here with me, and why wouldn't you contribute to the bills and, you know, financially to this home? But, yeah, still, this is my house, so I have rules set, and I'm saying that you don't need to be out past 11 o'clock um, because this is my house. Now, your mother obviously still has in her thinking the fact that you might still be a child, and sometimes that's hard for parents to get out of that way of thinking, um, but you know, they just still think of you that it's still, everything is back to the way it was when you was in junior high and high school. Okay. You just back in the house and we just didn't picked up where we left off on your end. The way you see it is I'm a grown woman and I'm just kind of like a roommate. Now I'm here and I have, you know, I'm paying half of the bills here, so I should be able to c come and go as I please. Yes. That really should be how it is, but you've got to look at it from your mother's point of view. It's her house, and she feels like that she has rules set for you guys, and you have to buy from them. The easiest way to resolve all this is to move out the damn house, okay? You have enough money to, you can afford to um, live on your own, then why don't you go do that, okay? I understand that you're trying to help your mom out. Um, she got this grown-ass man. Why is he 30 years old still living in the house, okay? That's like the next question. Like, she got all these grown-ass people living in the house with her. And, uh, yeah, the relationship has handicapped because you guys are grown now. Really, you shouldn't be there. It doesn't sound like your mom needed the help. Um, you know, I guess it would have been more struggle on her if she, if you weren't there. But what was she doing when you weren't there? She was making it, I'm assuming. Okay, so she has this, this so you have a 30-year-old brother that's living there. You 25. I don't really know how old your other siblings are. But 
I'm just going to say, if you don't like it, you're going to have to move, okay? You can tell your mom the exact same thing. Like, I'm, you know, I'm feeling like I'm contributing the weight to this household and you got all these rules and things set up on me. And uh, I'm going to have to go because it's not working for me. Okay, either she's going to bend because she knows that she needs your financial contribution or she's going to be like, okay, go. Okay, and then you're going to be like, okay, I'm going. Um, The 30-year-old, that really, I got a problem with that <laughs> because... That has really, that's, you talking about a handicap. That is really a handicap that she allows him to be there. He's fucking 30 years old um, and he can come and go as he pleases and all that. I don't know if he's also helping financially, but yeah, I mean, uh -uh. so um, in a perfect world, yes, I would like for you to be able to stay there, help your mom and be able to come and go as you please, but that ain't how it's working in your mama's house, okay? So you're going to have to make the decision. Either you're going to abide by her rules, still help out with the bills, or you're going to tell her that I'm going to help out the, with the bills, um, but I should be able to do what I want to do, you know, with respect. Uh, obviously, you ain't going to be sneaking men into the damn house and y'all, you know, you know, be quiet. Come on back here not going to be doing stuff like you going to still respect her house but she needs to bend on those rules and if she's not willing to do that then you going to leave you going to take your money with you okay that doesn't mean that you don't love your mama any less um it just means that you're grown up and you're going to live in your own house so that you can do what you want to do and uh you know your mom can deal with that grown ass brother of yours living in the house <laughs> you know and everybody else okay that's I'm not trying to be harsh, I'm not trying to be mean, but you guys are grown and you're living with your mama. Okay, so that's that's kind of how I see it. Decide which way is going to work best for you. What do you want? Where are you going? I'm going Oh, okay. I'm still doing it. You done? No, I'm not done, Jada. Hold it. Baby, hello, everybody. Jada Markup, and I am here just to say hello. Are you going to put this on? Jada, cut out. My name is Jada Markup. Hey, Rox. I'm a 27-year-old female. I'm a recent college graduate, and I also just started a new job making double what I was making at my old job. I have been at a... I have been in a relationship with a man I've known for almost nine years and have been with for five years. Six months ago, I came home from work and he sat me down and said he needed to talk to me. I thought he was proposing, but what he told me was he had cheated on me once and the girl he cheated on me with contacted his mother on Facebook to let him know that she had had a child. The child was two days old when she contacted her. I was shocked because I never thought he would cheat on me and now there's a child involved. After the paternity test was done, we found out it was his. The baby's mother was actually married and had not throughout the whole pregnancy even tried to contact my boyfriend. I know people make mistakes, but this is a large one. Now he talks about marrying me and having our own family, but he also feels that now I'm making enough money I could leave. I want children and a family now, especially since I've been accomplishing all of my goals I have set. I really don't know what to do because I really love this man, and again, people make mistakes. It's just I couldn't handle if he would cheat on me again. I honestly believe it was a one-time thing, but you still cannot forget but still you can forgive but not forget now his baby's mother is liking all his pictures on instagram and telling him that he is going to make that she is going to make his life miserable take all his money for his child support and have him and i paying for her new apartment can i please get can you please give me any advice girl that's a mess <laughs> i feel sorry for you yeah, it's bad when, you know, you have no idea that something like this is going on and then you just blindsided. A few, I'm not going to tell you what you should do. I'm just, we're just going to point out a few things and maybe you can come to some kind of conclusion on your own. Now, the first thing is, it's horrible that he's cheated, okay? And that not only did he cheat, but the cheat produced a child. He told you that he only cheated one time and it, I'm assuming that it is possible that it could only have happened one time. However... Let's look at the fact that if he cheated that one time, he had sex with this person without a condom. And uh, just to me, it's kind of odd to think that he only cheated one time, but then in that one time he got her pregnant and that he didn't know and that he felt comfortable enough to sleep with her without a condom. Okay, but it is possible. It is possible. But that's the first thing. Was something else going on longer now? This lady sounds like she's messy enough to she would have told you by now if it really so. Maybe he only did do it one time. Um, but have you talked to this woman yourself? Okay, have you got any clarity on what their relationship was and what happened? Now, granted, the girl does sound like she's messy. 
But why is she so just off the bat, just a mess? Okay, have you guys all have words? Have you guys been, um, have you been going back and forth with the lady? Has he been going back and forth with the lady? Does the lady still want to be with him? I mean, it's kind of like more things to this that I'm, that I'm missing. I'm feeling confused or I'm feeling like there's holes in the story or stuff that you might have left out, you know, maybe just trying to be brief in the letter. But I don't understand why she's just automatically funky. Um... Is she still married? Like, what What exactly is going on there? You got all these goals set in your goals. If you're okay with the fact that he got somebody else pregnant and you can just kind of alter your goals to just kind of include this baby because you got to you gotta understand that this baby and this baby mama is fixing to be around for the next 18 years. Okay, if you feel like that's awesome stuff that you can deal with, then then go on and deal with it, okay? If 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 it's not nothing that you want to deal with now, yes, I know you love him to death, and that he um, is, you know, you've been with him all this time, and you had already planned that he was part of your goals, okay? That you guys were going to have this family and all of that. But um, if if that don't fit into your goals, him and his extra drama right now, it's kind of mean to say, but you guys ain't got married yet. You can afford to live on your own. You might have to cut the ties and just move on with your life, okay? Way easier said than done. I'm not saying that that is going to be the easiest thing to do, but I'm just saying that, you know, it's just we got, like you guys, I look at things so kind of black and white a lot of times that I think that it's a, um, I think that it's a fault of mine, but it's just really either you're going to stay and deal with the baby and the baby mama or you're not, okay? It's just one or the other, especially if you can afford to be on your own. You don't really have anything else holding you back other than emotions and feelings and the love for them. Now, you guys have had your conversations about whether or not you can trust them still and that... You know, it's hard to stay in a relationship when the trust is broken. And um, I don't know if you still trust him or not. Um, he has no reason not to trust you. But, yeah, it's just, you know, if you guys are starting a relationship out on things like this, it's just going to be that much more difficult. I'm not telling you you should leave that relationship, but I'm just telling you that you should really think about the next 18 years of your life. This woman, um, you get involved with him, you guys get married, and then the courts can come after your money as well. Okay, so that's another thing that you need to think about. Okay, are you also willing to get your money tied up in this child support if he gets into arrears and things like that? It's a lot to look at, a lot to look at. I hope that you guys can all kind of come to some kind of agreement um, if you do decide to stay, okay? So good luck to you. All right, you guys, so that's it. Um, I got a whole bunch of letters left still. So like I said, you guys don't send me no more letters. Let me get through the other 15 that I have um, for the next video because I'm feeling like this video is up on 45 minutes already. So. Um, I'm going to try to edit it down, but yeah, I don't like my videos to be, I just don't like them to be that long. I know some of you guys do, but whatever. All right, so you guys remember to rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks, the channel is Forward's Rocks, and everything else I do will be in the bottom bar below. All right, all right. Ooh. Get in here and take me some Zyrtec. <laughs> I hope that you guys have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, and I plan on doing the same. Until next time, Rockstars. Bye.